For any organization to fight corruption, there must be a certain level of transparency within its fold in order to build trust with the general public. The spectre of corruption exists everywhere. The only difference between highly corrupt countries and least corrupt ones is that the latter's anti-corruption agencies are absolutely independent and impartial. For them, there are no sacred cows, no untouchables. In Nigeria, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is one of the top agencies tasked with, the, with bringing corrupt government officials to book. But since its inception, the EFCC has consistently been accused of being a political tool in the hands of the incumbent president, of being selective in its investigations and thus guilty of double standards. It is interesting that every past EFCC chairman that has been removed has faced serious allegations. Thus, since its inception, the EFCC and its successive leaders have not covered themselves in glory. Just last year, the former EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, and former governor of Zamfara State, Bello Matawale, engaged in a dirty fight over corruption allegations. While Bawa accused Matawale of involvement in monumental corruption, the governor accused the EFCC chairman of demanding a $2 million bribe from him. The independence and transparency of anti-graft agencies is key if Nigeria can be free from corruption. Joining us on the show this morning to discuss what needs to be done to eradicate corruption within anti-graft agencies in Nigeria is Kayode Ajulo, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Ajulo, and welcome to the morning show. Well, good morning. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for joining us. You've been in the news lately saying that the uh, president should set up a task force to probe the EFCC, because as uh, the chairman of EFCC himself, Olukoyede, uh, admitted that there is corruption even within the EFCC. So key custodies, Ipsos custodies, who will guard the guardians. You're also asking that the ICPC and the EFCC should be merged. What are your findings that led you to these uh, conclusions? Well, well, thank you very much. I think one of the things to make society great is for the citizenry to be discerning, to be hope, and to ensure that the writing is done. We can all choose to sleep and to be silenced. When we talk of EFCC, I think I need to make a little recourse to history, how we got to where we are. If you remember 2000 and 2019, when the president, Bob Asanjo, came in, to 2002, there are a lot of conferences, seminar, seminars, severally to discuss how issue of Nigeria, because as at that time, Nigeria happened to be one of the 23 states where there are non-compliance with all this issue of money laundering and all those policy that can reduce corruption and particularly financial crime. And as early 2002, there was a bill that was sent to the National Assembly where that's EFCC Act, then 2003. EFCC started its operation. The very essence of EFCC at that time is to ensure that financial crimes are to be eradicated, not only investigating financial crime, but to ensure that there is intelligence to ensure that all those sleaze has to be nipped in the bud and where it is occurred, there must be a stop to it and they must be, all those who are guilty, who are, who are charged, must be prosecuted. And as at that time, if you remember, that's when we have the names of Adi Benders, Ajidua, the like of Anna Jembas, all those in Zeri Bays and Coast. Those are, those, those are the time when EFCC are really working. But gradually, and I'm sure the, 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 it is so clear in the air that EFCC has already abdicated its responsibility. The very essence of bringing EFCC in is seem to have been, to, it seem to have been lost, particularly by those the operators of the EFCC. From the report, as mentioned by the lady some minutes ago, that's why you ask one question. How come all the heads of EFCC, one way or the other, they find themselves out, based, you know, they may make themselves in political, political uh, games. And as at today, there are many instances that when you look, you investigate and interrogate 
what plays out. You find that it is purely political. And that's why I came out about, about a week ago to say that now, yes, he has, has apparently turned itself to political tools. And this has to be has to stop. There are times when, as a lawyer, your client will tell you, I want my matter to go to EFCC because they know 100% they will, they will have they will have their they will, they will have a recourse and and one way or the other they will be happy whatsoever maybe their complaint will be met but today you find that once the matter is not they not have any political collaboration or whosoever may be those those who are involved may not put a political exposed person yes that's when they will tell you go back to police but they seem to be more excited to to grandstand to go on media media trial and to do all those sorts of things. And I think this is not the essence how EFCC is, 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 is set up. As it is, as God will have it again, from what I mentioned about a week ago, the chairman of the EFCC himself has even come out to say, yes, some of the operators are collecting bribes. And the most annoying things that really shocked me, the most shocking thing here is to tell them to change their ways as if he is speaking from the cathedral, from, from the pulpit. You are saying your operators are demanding price and you have seen some people. The next thing is to go after them, reveal them, and get them off the, off the hook. And um, what, and I can pity him to be, than, to be a little bit, uh, have some uh, mercy on him in the sense that maybe he's powerless. Maybe the EFCC cannot cleanse themselves. And if EFCC cannot cleanse itself, the right thing to do is because we have to agree. EFC is a critical institution in this country. We can't allow it to flutter. Mm -hmm. And maybe the president should set up a presidential tax force to ensure that the right thing is done. Though there have been some tax force before, it seemed to be targeted on the head. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ajilo. Let me come in from the point of this task force you're recommending for the president to set up. Um, to at least investigate or fish out the corrupt officials within EFCC itself. Do you not think, because what we have in Nigeria as corruption is an endemic problem, it's a culture um, problem in some instances, whereby at different levels, corruption is embedded. What is the guarantee that this presidential task force will itself not have corrupt officers that need another task force to oversee? So perhaps the question I'm asking is how do we deal with corruption in itself so that it doesn't become commonplace such that even the body or the agency tasked with fishing out um, corruption amongst Nigerians is in itself uh, tagged with having corrupt officials? Well, thank you very much. I think we should not lose sight of the fact that in as much as we say that Nigeria has a lot of undesirable elements, Yes, we still have some Nigerians that can stand and that we can believe in. That irrespective of where they are, how they have been exposed, they still remain blameless. It is the duty of the president, if he really wants to do a good job, to fit, to look for those people, those who are incorruptible. In as much that we complain of police, there are some Nigerian police officers that still stand and stand erect. Irrespective that you complain about civil servants, I can tell you that we have thousands, thousands of civil servants that can, we can still say they play according to the book and they are as right and rigid and strong and clean as fruit. In as much that we talk of some Nigerians always asking for bribe, they are corrupt, we still ask some people. I don't need to mention names, but you know them. It is for the, it is the duty of the, of the Nigerian president and Nigerian government to look for those that will deliver and to clean EFCC. Okay, let's talk about <clears throat> where all of this even started. The politicization of the EFCC. Because apart from EFCC missing its way, there are claims of EFCC largely becoming political and used to which haunt political opponents because when you still look at it, that's still the pervading angle till date. Look at people that you know they ought to have been investigated by the EFCC, but they withdraw because they say, oh, certain person says withdraw and all of that. Let's talk about that angle. Secondly, let's also talk about the multiplicity of corruption fighting institution. You've got the ICPC, you've got the EFCC. Now you're talking about another institution to watch, be a police watch guard on the EFCC. 
when we know that in some climbs, all you just need to have is a department in the police force that fights corruption that does empirical research and evidence and get copious notes across. Why are we having multiple? Because if we have more institutions with the ones we have already, it doesn't mean it's going to fight corruption. We've not seen the work of the IFCPC. EFCC2 has been left. I think we should deal with what really causes us to go astray. What do you think about that? Well, thank you very much, but I'm afraid maybe you are getting my from the perspective I'm coming from. I'm not asking that there should be a new platform, a new institution that we that maybe that will replicate EFCC. What I'm saying that there's a need to clean the audience table of EFCC. There's need to weed out the corrupt ten ten tendencies and the power and principality that has made EFCC not to fly. The essence of the tax force is not something that will be permanent. Its essence is more like an auditing, integrity test to check who are those people. If, for example, today, the chairman, chief executive officer of the EFCC has already agreed that some of his men are corrupt. The next thing I'm expecting, at particular as a lawyer that he is, is to say this and this and this, this who they are and off the table. But to cop to stop at the point of saying they are corrupt and now to be begging them or to be summonizing and, and urging them to, to change their ways, I believe that is not wrong. Here's a critical, like I mentioned, what is expected. And when we talk of tax force, tax force basically is to look into the issue, do the auditing, do the integrity test, and those who are found wanting, they take them away and then bring back EFCC to its real mandate. I'm not saying that the, the new platform will not be a new and add to the multiplicity. And yes, I can agree with you that when we talked of the, those who are fighting the law enforcement agency, there are so much. But I don't think that is, just, that is the problem. Nigeria is faced with a lot of problems. There's a need to, to, to look for those that will clear that problem. Yes, we talk of police. Don't forget that police have special fraud unit, which is more like EFCC. We have the ICPC, and in some areas we have. We are, even Let me even use this opportunity. You'll be shocked to know the number of personnel we have in the police. We need to even ask people, whereas a lot of people are walking around the street doing nothing. People are running away. We need to add more. And apart from that, the ICPC too, they need more personnel. EFCC too, they need more personnel. So the question is, I have no problem with whether the multiplicity of the anti-corrupt agencies. Yes, even if I have my way, I will even ask that we need to have more. But what matter most is to keep the eyes on the ball. What is their function? What is their duty? Not that they turn themselves to political tool. Like the mentioned Zamfara, you mentioned the, the one of you mentioned earlier. Two days to giving a, a, a Supreme Court giving giving judgment in one of the one of them quickly FCC started running after one. Immediately the court, the Supreme Court gave the ruling the judgment and it favored that you run after the after the after the the driver and start saying he must he must be he must be prosecuted. Is that what the EFCC have been reduced to? I think that's what it is. And this is somebody who happened to be a minister. Before you become a minister, you must have gone through some security checks. So are we now saying that there's no security check? Or where is the EFCC as at that time of the security check to do the right thing? If you remember, there is a minister that was stopped because of of some institution to raise their security position and to say no why can't they do that before making a minister because it, so it has to be dependent pendulum has to shift as it affects his political fortune that is not the way and i'm sure that is not the efcc that we plan and we have for the country okay let's interrogate this issue about proposed merger of efcc and icpc because you were quoted as having proposed that and you are not alone the uh, Attorney General yes. of the Federation, Latif Fagwe yes. BSA, had also said a similar thing, that the two bodies should be merged, one in charge of investigation, the other in charge of prosecution. But this is not the first time this will come up. As far back as 2015, when Ekunta was in charge of uh, the ICPC, as the chairman of ICPC, he said, no, it wouldn't be a good idea. That after all, in South Africa, you have up to about eight graft investigating agencies and then you also have you know uh other agencies in nigeria and that all of them should work together otherwise if you merge icpc and uh, efcc his argument is that you will even demoralize the staff of the agencies but you call for a merger why do you think a merger is necessary 
Well, maybe I'm being, maybe, maybe, maybe it has to be with miscomprehension of what I'm trying to say. Yes, today, by the time you compare EFCC and ICPC, I am not a same man on any of them, but you can see the difference is so clear, particularly the day the, with their procedure. If you receive an invitation from ICPC today, one of the things that will be included in the letter is that they will even urge and beg you that you must come with your lawyer because they are ready to investigate and do it surreptitiously and intelligently. And you know, when you see such, one will not do much than to ask that if we bring this together, maybe there will be sanity in the system. But if I must tell you the truth, the, my idea and what I'm proposing is even to, to have the major will be like we have a central body and have different agencies. I did not see anything wrong if, if the Attorney General, the Honorable Attorney General, should propose for two, two uh, major with one doing. I would propose that we have major with about six different agencies. Here we are talking of the investigation. We are talking of prosecution, forgetting that most of the proceed of crime and most of this property has to be managed. The question that there must be an agency that will manage such 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 properties, such proceeds. Why I'm saying that is this: today we have a situation where EFCC we do the investigation, EFCC we do the prosecution, and whatsoever may be the proceed, particularly the property, they are the one. And that's why you find out that it is always so palatable, so attractive to quickly grab in all the properties to ensure that, oh, we are the one managing it. I don't think that's the way. So the idea is, I think I, I wrote a thesis recently, though, though I'm here to even, even conclude it. You find out that if there must be such major, it is to have like a central body. It's, for example, where you have the NSA. The office of the NSA is the one coordinating all the security outfits in Nigeria. My idea of Fajr is to have the office, one office that will coordinate all the financial crimes in Nigeria. And you have different agencies. Almost it eight. I think that is eight I have in that proposal, in that, in that the thesis. That eight we face one or two, or each each of those departments. We are talking of prosecution. And don't forget, apart from prosecution, there is one by intelligent gathering. Nobody is even talking about that. An agency of financial crime will be like NIA, like SSS, that there is to gather intelligence. That will be one one. Then we have the issue of investigation. Investigation, that is when it comes to issue of commission of crime. I remember there was a time I was speaking with the one of the former, former head of the ICPC. He told me that one of his main cardinal points is to ensure that we should not be talking of commission of crime, that the ICPC should be able to be in a situation to ensure that all the crime to be committed is snipping the board. And I agree with him. Such, there must be more like an agency to ensure that it's like we're talking of who. There must be an agency that will ensure that before the each coup even happen, it is being discovered, it is being apprehended and stopped. This is what I'm talking about. It is not about only margin EFCC with ICPC and we go to sleep. All right. Um, since we're talking about intelligence gathering and you look at also merging some agencies that work complementarily, let's also look at the security agencies because one of the things that have been highlighted as a weakness in that area is the lack of synergy across uh, different agents of security in the, in the country. Um, take, for instance, the issue with the kidnapping, spate of kidnappings we've seen in Abuja, um, banditry, terrorism that has plagued the nation in recent times, and the role of the police, the launch of the special, inter special intervention squad of the police, and the role of the joint task force of the military and how they can work better together to secure Nigeria. Do you think there can be more to be done? And then intelligence gathering especially, how best can we optimize this, especially to tackle insecurity in Nigeria? Well, thank you very much. You know, when we talk of issue of security, I'm always a bit, a bit, a bit skeptical and a, a bit, uh, uh, I, you know, as a lawyer, I always like to discuss what I know very well. I think when it comes to that issue of security, we've learned the police are working, this, the army and everything. But when it comes to Abuja security, um, I am a resident of Abuja. That was a time about 12 years ago I contested for the, for the Senate seat of, Abu, of FCT under the Labour Party. So I think Abuja is more like a home to me. 
the kid, recent kidnapping in Abuja is is quite worrisome, I must tell you. And I know the police are working, everybody are working, but the critical one, nobody is discussing about it. Abuja has a head, had administrative head, a minister of FCT. The minister is someone I so much have high regard for. I like his energy, I like his passion, but optics matter here. And that's, and that's what I would like to address. The minister, with, for one reason or another, seemed to be more concerned with another thing than Abuja. And that, to us, particularly residents of Abuja, are, they are worried. It seemed to have divided attention. It seemed to be more concerned with something we should not be. As a minister of Abuja must be minister of Abuja. Abuja must be 100% is concerned. But unfortunately, I think that is not what it is. Like I mentioned, it's someone I have regard for. A life venture, of course, and which I know he has been working. He's a good administrator. And even when he was appointed, I think I wrote a paper to say after he will be the one that, that will break the, the record of Malan Eru fight when it comes to delivering on time, delivering on his agenda. But unfortunately, one way or the other, politics and distraction seem to take over, to, to cover. And these are the things Abuja residents are worried about. And I think that's a, that, I think the minister needs to be advised to concentrate on Abuja more than any other thing. Okay, on that note, uh, we'd like to thank you very much, Kyle Ajulo, SAN, for joining us on The Morning Show.